just wanted to also say Nova hasn't even seen the statue herself. So this is a very exciting moment for her. Um, so I'd just like to introduce Nova, Jack and Destiny to take the curtain off. <laughs> Now, um, Nova, you want to have a little yarn? <laughs> I'll get up here, sorry. Thank you. Um, so Nova, this isn't your typical bronze statue, it's incredible. Talk us through the base of the statue in particular and why this, uh, the story of why uh, Gender Mara Cad was involved. Um, yeah, firstly before I talk, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's made the effort to come today. Um, and thank you for your, um, for your contribution today as well. But yeah, this statue, um, when Gilly and Mark wanted to, to do this statue, I said it was important because for all my sporting achievements, it wouldn't have been possible without the strength and the resilience of those who have gone before me. And the base of the statue, normally statues are a square box. I've not come from a square box. My life has been one of, um, you know, challenges and adversity. And so when I spoke to Jandamara, um, I said, everything that makes me Aboriginal is the base of this, of this statue. And for the, the saltwater crocodile, that's our um, totem from the Buddhist um, Gadjadu and Iwaja mob from up in the West Arnhem Land region. So that's our family totem. Um, you've got the three flowers here. That's my mother and my grandparents, Nana Nora and Johnny Paris, who are all members of the Stolen Generation. And the three the flowers, um, which make up the, the stolen generation flower is the bush hibiscus and it's grown throughout 90% of Australia and it's known for the strength and the resilience of the, of the, um, of the stolen generation flowers. Um, the the black-headed python is a prominent totem for us in, uh, in the Kimberley region. So my mob are east and west uh, Kimberleys from the Yaru and the Gidja peoples. And of course you've got the, the boab tree, um, you know, that's that's me, I'm a Kimberley girl and I'm a West Arnhem Land girl. And so to get to this, I have everything here to be grateful for. And, and obviously my, um, there was the, the mixed emotions of what sort of um, statue, is it gonna be a hockey player? Is it going to be someone in parliament or uh, me running? And you know, for me to go to the Olympics and the Sydney Olympics and run, that was my first childhood dream was to run up the Olympic Games and you know, I, ne I didn't get a gold medal but we broke an Australian records and got to run five times in front of 110,000 um, people which is a f phenomenal thing and so you know my Olympic gold medal of course I wouldn't have been able to get that without the incredible um, hockey roo girls and you know thank you Lisa uh, for your contribution today I love you and what stays on, what happens on tour stays on tour. And she said I was a bit cheeky, but um, you know, we, we were all good mates and um, you know, we all come from all different backgrounds, but we all were driven by that one common goal. And that was, um, you know, to, to do the best that we could do and, and thankful for people like Rick Charlesworth who guided me as well. So the base of this is, um, it's me, you know, it's me running over country. I was born from country and we go back to country. So um, that's, that's the rationale behind it. Great. Um, sorry. Okay. Tell us about the hockey stick and gold uh, medal in the statue and also um, how that, uh, the pose, how it all came together in this design. So this, that actual pose is when I won Commonwealth Games. Um, coming off the turn and the uniform is the uniform that I wore at the Sydney Olympics. And yeah, the hockey stick is of the, um, I guess we gave them photographs and they were able to capitalize that. And, and that's my Olympic gold medal, which they've done an incredible job and which is now in the National Museum of Australia. And so 
you know, all that is is me, you know. Um, even when I had my portrait um, in Parliament House, I, I didn't wear any shoes and I'm sitting on the, the root of a, a tree. So, you know, irrespective of all the things that I've, I've done, I always try and remain humble and, um, you know, it's just, it's an honour to be able to, to serve your country and, and to represent your country. And, but it all comes from the hard work and, you know, for my own kids who have done remarkably well, I'm immensely proud of them. And sadly, my eldest daughter, Jess, couldn't be here today. She's in East Arnhem Land. She's, she's working away in the community stuff that she does. And my little grandson, Isaac, he's 12 years old. He came here in May when we were supposed to do the unveiling. And and uh, I said, come on, Isaac, we'll go back to Melbourne. He goes, nah, nah, not going back to Melbourne ever again. Don't want to do my two weeks hotel quarantine again. So poor fella. Um, but yeah, they couldn't be here today. And and uh, so, I've, you know, I just want to also acknowledge my husband, Scott, who's also been my rock. Um, you know, I'm super busy all the time, just never stop, like Destiny said. And and I couldn't do the things that I did without, um, without the, the stuff that he does behind the scenes. And they say, behind every good woman, there's a greater man. So thank you, Scott, for everything that you do for me and the kids. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us how you see the statue, what it rep represents and what message you hope it sends out to, you know, everyone that comes through and visits... Federation Square. Yeah, I guess um, I think I'm the only Aboriginal statue, female, in a sporting context. I think there are some men, um, rugby league players, but for me, it's not just a statue of me. It, like I said, it represents black excellence. It, it, it represents any kid out there who dares to dream big. You know, you've got to have your dreams, you've got to have your aspirations in life and, and anything can happen if you believe in yourself and you're willing to pull in the hard yard. So I don't, even though I see it as me, this is, this is for all the mob. This is for all the Aboriginal children out there um, who are so super talented. I want them to see black excellence um, because there's not enough of us out there. And there's a saying, you can't be what you can't see. And, you know, there's a lot of statues out there of the colonisers and we can't relate to that. This we can relate to. You know, it's not just a black excellent statue, but it's, it's a woman statue. It's a mother statue. It's, it's women who, um, you know, can achieve heights over adversity and, and you know, keep waking, every, waking up every day and say, I can do it, I can do it. It's just perseverance. So... Um, so many people told me I couldn't do it and I'm, I'm living proof that you, you can do it. And, you know, I'm just blessed to have good people around me and, you know, my children's speech today, Destiny and Jack, thank you. Thank you to everyone who, you know, came and gave their heartfelt speeches today. Um, you know, it felt like I was at attending my own funeral there at one stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 50 now. But anyway, thank you to, to everyone and um, I'm truly humbled by everyone coming out here today and, you know, and thank you to Fed Federation Square and thank you to the Wurundjeri mob and, and the Boonarong and the Kulin Nation mob and hope that you can put some good spirits over to me and look after me at night time and, uh, yeah, so um, I thank everyone and, and uh, for being here and thank you. Thank you for inviting me to MC today too. It's been an amazing honour to be here and do this for you. Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, if you'd like to stay around, we're going to go back downstairs and the Moroccan soup bar has, yeah. or soup kitchen, um, has generously donated their time and some food to go have some something to eat um, and have a little mingle downstairs. But before we go, I just wanted to thank two incredible people, Kate and Maria. Come up here, Maria. So when we were um, trying to get all this organised, this was in February, I think it was, or March, and I said to Scott, from Darwin, this is going to be very difficult. And so I called on the amazing Maria who got Kate involved and... Um, when we were trying to unveil it in, in May, um, with all the COVID, it shut down. And, and I just want to say thank you to Mary and Kate for everything that you did. And a few weeks ago, um, Maria lost her partner and 
in this crazy world of ours. But just want to say thank you. Oh, you did. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. And thank you, Hannah, from the Moroccan super, who's catered for everyone to go down and have something to eat. But I'm here to have photos and interviews and, and yeah, love you on. Thank you.